I she does have action. Started without me. Well, it I wasn't your not, turn yet. It's not your turn yet. You go after me. But, but these people missing their hot roll rolling action of apparently using witch bolt, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Who? Okay. Whatever. Can we? Why you got home quickly? You live above yeah. the farm, D. <laughs> no, I live like five minutes away. Okay. So is it my turn? Yep. Uh, yeah. Aurelia. Okay, well... I'm really just going to shoot at it with her crossbow, because whatever. Dang. <laughs> Bam. Almost a critical hit. Or do you have a thing yeah. that lets you critical on a 19? I know that exists. Nope. Oh, okay. It's mostly a fighter thing now. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh. Oh, bloody hell. And only five damage. Listen, I'll take five damage over no damage. All right. You want to use your bonus action for anything? Uh, no. All right. Then it's the water elemental's turn. Let me roll a quick d6 here. Huh. Well, in that case, um, it is going to attack you, Hagar, with two slams. Bring it on. Um... Um, you did start raging already, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm mad. So all he's doing is keeping me mad. Somebody is echoing. Oh, I, sorry, I got sounds on. Um, my AC is 14, so the 19 hits. Yep. And. But you have, like, resistance, right? Oh, I resist re slashing, piercing, bludgeoning. This okay. is a bludgeoning attack, <laughs> so you take eight. What's to take eight is 30... I should know this. I really should 36. <laughs> You can actually type in, like, minus eight, and it'll do the calculation for you. Yeah. Oh, I've got to keep my mind sharp. Anyway, I've done it. Right, and it's Grenache's turn. Except it's 34, not 36. Okay, so I'm, I'm still going to try and see if A is connected to B, as in this water, as see if this water elemental is connected to the pool we saw before. So that's another insight. I'm sorry, I, you're coming in a little soft. I only heard uh, that you want to roll insight. Well, yeah, I am changing that thing on this. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I could hear you. It's just uh, the volume was a little low. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's another insight to see if the water elemental is connected to the puddle that was being guarded before. So the one up just to the north? Yep, that one. Well, and you can roll insight and that won't require any actions. Okay. Oh, 22. It seems to you that the water elemental is guarding something. And that if that whip up north was also guarding something, it was probably less valuable because there's more than one of it. And you've only encountered one giant ass elemental. There may be something in this room that is more valuable than what was in the room to the north. Okay, so we can just leave him. So they're not there. connected then. Okay. Well, in that case, if they're not connected, I could just focus fire on this guy. 
So. I'm going to fire off my guiding bolt towards the water elemental. I am going to rule, by the way, that because the water elemental can move through your spaces, you can do the same, but just don't end up in this. But you just don't want to end up in one of its squares afterwards. In case well, you wanted to go up and personal. Uh, considering it's a ring spell attack, it's probably a bad idea to move right next to it. Right. So I'm, I'm probably going to stay where I am for the moment. Yep. But that's information for the future and for the rest of, of you, too. Okay, so range spell attack. That'll do. Okay, so that's 46 radiant damage, and the next attack roll against it has advantage. So roll damage. 14. All right, fuck him up, Hagar. Yeah, um... So you, you, do not need, do. you do not need to be reckless. You have advantage automatically. Sweet, then I'm just gonna hit it. I know that hits, so this is the time when I remember what my damage is, which is 1d8 plus 5. Isn't it 1d10? Because uh, you're 1D10, using it. Yeah, I'm two handed. Two handed. I should really just write that down. I'm never not gonna be using it two handed. Unless you are. get a shield for some weird reason. Sadly, the uh, no, the I'm a, an armored defense. Yeah, that's me. Well, the pipe seems to just sort of bound off its uh, off the sort of membrane that's keeping the water elemental water separate from everything else. Is that reacting to the slashing damage? Roll insight if you want to uh, find out. Okay, let's do that then. <laughs> Otherwise, it's your guess. There's uh, seven. It's your guess. So I guess so. <laughs> All right, and that plus five, that includes your rage bonus, right? Yeah. All right, then Lake. All right, uh, did you get my DMs about my... The, the angel thing. Um, yeah. Uh, is are you okay with that being a bonus action instead of just a normal action? Well, I I'd, I'd like a little more time to um figure that out. Plus, you know, rage does not involve flying out of reach. True, but which you have been using <laughs> unceasingly. To be fair, it's not going to. That's not what I'm using it for down here. I'm just using it for the boost to damage at this point. Because flying doesn't really, like, come into it. Down here. Hmm. But, um... Well, I'd like a second look before I make a final ruling, and until then, I just suggest you go by rules as written. Okay. Well, then, in that case, I'm not going to waste my, t uh, my turn just... It's powering up, um, so I'm just gonna do what I always do. Do it, Goku. Uh, and it doesn't have advantage because Guiding Bolt is done, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's just the next, just the one attack roll. <laughs> I should have spent my turn powering up. Oh well. <laughs> would have been just as and productive. Then you would have rolled terribly next round. It would have been just as productive. Yes. Nico, it's round to you again. Uh, can I put my? Yeah, can I roll my dagger, the magic dagger, which is the magic, which, which affects the monster. Good hand and like get the bonus from it, like the plus four from uh, Dex. Um. Yes. Yes. I do. 
Oh. Holy crap. Oh my. That's a nice critical. Critical roll. Do, critical do, hits do. in fifth edition let you roll all the dice twice. Yes. Sneak attack dice crit. <laughs> I think we may so, have just eviscerated this thing. I hope so. One D. Okay, so two D four plus eight. D four plus no, the, four piercing twice. Well, the bonus doesn't get oh, doubled. Do we, unless you want me to do it. The, the bonus doesn't get doubled. All of the dice get rolled twice. So that is two okay. D four plus four plus four D six. If you include sneak attack, yeah. Nico uh, M V fucking P. You, you missed the four. Weakness. Well, you forgot the four because you're dealing uh, uh, pri primary yeah, hand damage. Yeah, that's thirty-one. Yeah. Oh right, right. So, Plus four. So yeah, that killed me in one hit. Yeah, uh, you. Uh, did we get me pretty <laughs> damn close? You knocked half its remaining hit points Wait, out. No, it would kill me in one hit. Jeez. In, in one blow. <laughs> Good thing I'm not aiming at you, then, I guess. <laughs> you, you noticed that membrane the last time you struck. So this time you, you intentionally went for some sort of rending move to scrape, <clears throat> scrape that, uh, that surface off as much as possible. And by God, it's working. I just want to point out that that's four max damage rolls there as well. Oh, I am my turn. <laughs> that is incredible. Uh, well, you can pull out your short sword and still do an offhand attack. If you're not using, yeah, if you're not using your bonus action for anything else, you might as well try. That does yeah, not sure. hit, however. Uh, Eleven. I, I am my turn. You're a little too focused on your main hand and. You, you swing just wildly and hit nothing with your short sword. Cool kid. Okay, well, I guess Julie is just going to roll a d12. Six lightning damage. That is effective. Can't you do something else? Because, like, I think you can cast other spells as long as you just spend the bonus uh, action concentrating. It is a main it's, action. It's, it's like oh. a, an action to which okay. ball. Okay. Um, I'm not sure she's got much in the way of bonus. She's activated the song already. I think it's a, a second win. Could use a second win, but she's not taken any damage. Um, use an action surge. I don't oh, think yeah, she damage. used that. Let's do an action surge and roll another d12. <laughs> ah. Well, you could have you could have done something else. Uh, I think she's pretty happy with this. It's doing damage, double damage, or something. Hmm. If I know Julia, she'd just love zapping it with its weakness. I mean, we're basically on the same level. Wait, did you uh, skip Aurelia's turn? Did yeah. I? Oh, yeah. you did. I don't like the look of that six, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. All right, well, that, that'll come up soon, but Aurelia's now. Okay, um, Aurelia's just going to shoot it again because it's almost dead, and she's running low on spells, so... It discharges all the electricity, killing Kaga. <laughs> Six damage. That's my turn. Okay. That was its turn. It just got whelmed back, but uh, honestly, the slams are a little more effective right now, so it's going after Hagar again. And once uh, again, it'll hits. hit. Yeah, once again, it hits once. Let me just double check. Yep. Yeah. Five damage, all told. 
Hey, tw 23 hit points left. You have reduced me to half health, sir. Grenache. Okay, yeah, I got nothing, nothing that works in melee for this thing, so. Don't think there's quite enough there to to try and use another guiding bot, so I'm gonna just use Sacred Flame. It has to make a dex saving throw. Okay, and that'll probably fail. Yep, it fails. So that's one d eight radiant damage. Piss. God damn it. Oh well. We can't all be winners. Uh, I just sort of singed it. This. Almost missed it, but you know. Is it going to use my whole action to rip the shark teeth off my pipe? Or can I um, do it as a bonus? This is important. What would your follow up to that be exactly? Well, if I take the teeth off my pipe, it does bludgeoning damage again. Right. And so I figure if slashing's not hurting it as much as it should, then maybe hitting it with a normal pipe would be more effective. This is um, how Hagar think. Well, uh, you can interact with an object for free once per round. So Sweet. I would say I'll that you can just sort of, then. yeah, you can just sort of grab the pipe and then just sweep the teeth off, like pulling it through your hand. Okay. Let's do that. Bludgeoning damage this time, then. Let's hit. I'm not sure. I, I kind of imagine the teeth wrapped around the pipe like, um, you ever seen Mankind's old um, baseball bat with barbed wire wrapped around it? I imagine. Oh, right. Like okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how I was uh, always imagining it. Let's get reckless. Yeah. They're <laughs> <laughs> all the same number twice. Let's get needlessly reckless. Okay. <laughs> Roll 1d10 plus 5. This is bludgeoning damage. 12. All right. Well, the results of your experiment are that you give it a good whack, and uh, it... It does seem to slow the thing down, but um, not particularly more so than it did with the shark's teeth. Can I have another think about this? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, roll with advantage, because you have tested your hypothesis now. <laughs> the scientific, scientific method <laughs> for wacky things. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, Nako's dagger is enchanted. You know this, um, that he, he has shared this fact with you at some point. And your javelin that you threw earlier, that, that's magic too. You so I need a magic it, pipe. But it's, it's currently just sort of lying on the floor over on the left side of the room here. You think maybe mm. that would do some extra damage if you just went over, grabbed it, and stabbed that thing into its back. But that'll have to wait for next turn. Yeah. Lake. <laughs> next. Unless that's a hit. As... No. no. Yeah, well. next. Next. <laughs> A very good chance you will end this. Man, I'm rolling like Will Wheaton. Uh. <laughs> chance. You are Will Wheaton. Not a guarantee, but. No, I, I'm not Will Wheaton. Well, I haven't been uh, on enough bad TV shows about nerds. Can't understand what's happening because we're all talking about Will Wheaton. 
Well, you know, you, sometimes you get Easy. your 20s, sometimes you get your 1s. Yeah. You still um, got an offhand attack, though. Kalon's being okay, bad at board games, which is just like Will Wheaton. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, apparently this water elemental is totally aware of what just happened, and it is defending itself against you. Cool kid. Well, higher than a one on the damage, please. Yeah, I don't think... You're better than me. I don't think Julia would do anything particularly different if it's working. I mean, are you... Are you I mean, using spells right now? Yeah, he's using witch bolt. Yeah, I'm witch bolt because it's, it's effective-ish. Uh, is that yeah, so. a cantrip? It's a, no, it's, it's a, a level one spell. Oh, how many spell slots does she use have? Use it, and then as long as you keep using it, you just roll the 1d12 for damage. It's like you got a hit with it uh, first I time, see. and then you're just doing damage until... Okay, yeah, cool. Just it every I just damage. wanted to like, you know her character is a fighter, so she can... Attack it as well. Oh yeah, I can totally close in, but I don't think that would do particularly more damage and it wouldn't hit the weakness, so... Yeah, that's fine. I wasn't complaining, I was just... No, no, you're fine, you're fine. Kind of cramped out over there. Um, yeah, she wouldn't, need, she wouldn't need to move. And you're up. Aurelia. Okay, wow, how have we not killed it yet? Because um... I roll like crap and... The yeah, person they, they it was a rhetorical. Minecraft. It was a really, it was a rhetorical question. I always knew it was Colin holding us back. <laughs> okay. God damn it! Water is uh, is starting to fade. Muddy, run, look less like. I don't think it's got much energy left keeping it together, but it does have enough energy to give um, to give Hagar a good couple of whacks. And you did you did use reckless attack, right? I did. You have advantage. Uh, the seventeen hits. Uh, that's a. Uh Tie. I accidentally I clicked more than once. I forget what, I forget what happened. But the 17 ties. and the 9. Yeah, 17 and 19. Uh, tie goes to the roller. Okay, but the well, 17, the 17 and the 9. Night. But the, uh, y you can skip the 8. I clicked too often. But it's uh, a 19 and a 17 are no, the two okay. advantage rolls. I may die before I can stab this thing in the back. That's six. Ouch. And, and that's seven. 14, uh, 26. Um, I'm on minus no, three. It's still halved. It's still yeah, halved. It's still raging, so it's up. Oh, I didn't rage last. I forgot that last time. Um, raging. Okay, well, I've away I'm alive, so it doesn't matter. I just need to remember that. It's so much to remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Grenache, then. you've got a good chance of finishing this. Yes, but I'm also seeing that Haggai is in some serious trouble, so now I, I consider getting I got ten hit points. Yeah, but just to be sure I move up close and then I just start wailing on it. Um, start with a spear. Okay, 18 hits with a spear. Okay, that is not quite enough to finish it. Okay, well, I want to guarantee to finish it, so I'm going to use a flurry of blows. That's two unarmed attacks. Say that um, Clara Flurry after single bonus attack. Sorry. You can 
I am ruling that you can declare a flurry of blows after making your single bonus. So you can save that key point if it dies. Okay. Well, let's see what happens here. Oh! It dies. Okay, then. Yay! Let's go take a nap. I feel that Genie would lose. You stab it. that. Sp oh yeah, loot. Yeah. You stab that spear into its face and just tear it, tear it open. And well, again, you, you really can't tell, but th the, the water has stopped trying to kill you. So you think, you think you've done well. Reaching my established membrane and just crushed it in my hand. I'm investigating. Well, that central plinth in the center of the room, its uh, it looks sort of like a well, but it only goes down about like a cup, about a foot uh, from the edges of the stone circle. And along one side of it, you see a receptacle where something round has to go. Mm, I remember seeing something round. <laughs> I think I gave it to Hagar. Hagar, we're gonna put that in there after we go to bed. Get that that orb. Oh, Hagar already immediately fell asleep after the fight. Okay then. He, well. just, he just curled up. Um. Okay. Well, that's bad. Let's go get past this other guy for. What other guy, we run into. I mean, like, or we, we can just do the thing. I don't can know. we not just... just stay here and hope he doesn't wander over? I mean, he's not probably not going to wander over. He seemed pretty intent on guarding that place, so we could. Are we really? Why don't we just keep going? Because yeah, we I'm... really need to like regain spell slots and stuff. We just regain. You just regained your spell slots. No, I... I'm saving my spell slots through that battle. Yeah, I but Julia has I'm not been. Me. Grunash has not has has not been. I would like to get stuff from my magic items back. Okay, it just feels a little gamey to like stay overnight in the middle of a dungeon, but okay. That's I'm why we keep guards up. In one rage. Like, okay, so. sure, sure. So I really need to sleep. Hey, uh, lady takes first rest because she gets to trance. Yeah. Can I pick oh, up we the... Just uh, sleeping in here, okay then. Can I pick the, up the, like, the shiny thing that like, I can also... They stand over. The uh, Hangar saw his javelin, which he had thrown earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, picked it up. Sorry, I didn't hear that. He picks it up and then uh, curls you off get, to sleep. You get all of your, your long back, you get full health back, and you get half of your hit dice if you've spent any on short rests to get extra hit points. Everyone's healed unless Bobbin gives us a random encounter. Yeah. Um, when we wake up, I'm going to cast Armor of Agathis and then use my Pearl Power to regain that spell slot. Julia. What, does she have Mage Armor? I'm sure I remember. Does she have. Uh, she does. And she you has this. Mage Armor. She yeah, she regularly casts it too. If I may, Bobbin, uh, since we're taking a long rest, I want to try and attune to this uh, stone that I got. The um... stone of protection. Yeah. Yeah, that's something you can do during a long rest. Okay, cool. So it starts floating above your head and providing you a plus one armor class. And I wish I had plus one in my armor class. And if I could make one last little suggestion, you may want to go back and explore some of the rooms that you just sort of barreled through in l the last session. Okay. Because, like, all, all of these three oh. over here, these two here, you didn't explore any of them. You just ran straight into the next rooms. Okay. As soon as you saw we there were doors. Find the okay, I investigate this room. Investigate uh, this room, I guess. 
How can our Anne's new best friend investigate this room? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll take this one then. Well, we don't need to split up. I mean, <laughs> well, let's all take a room. Well, apparently you're going to. Mine. But um, so the, the the pillars room is entirely barren. Um. Okay. Lake, the room that I you are in, is room. also apparently empty. Okay. Grenache. Um, Hang on, I get two rolls on this. Grenache, you rolled terribly, but you still managed to spot the the uh, the Kotoa that were playing that tile game from earlier that you mm -hmm. interrupted and just spooked them off by trying to join in. We all just uh, swarmed in and were like, deal me in! <laughs> <laughs> it turns out they were playing for stakes, and so there's 17 copper on the table. But where's the stake? <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I'm just pocketing that copper for myself. Yeah, go ahead, keep it. Don't even bother splitting that. I got one the meat. <laughs> All right, and uh, Nico. Um, okay, so the half collapsed room, I'll, I should start with that. The half collapsed room has a table, it has some scraps of fish on it, but nothing that looks valuable. However, the room that Nako is in seems a little different. That shelf on the right side there is covered in uh, jars and vials of various types. And on the south side here, that little sort of black rectangle thing is a closed chest. Okay. Um... I wrote nature on the jars. <laughs> Hagar, roll a constitution saving throw. Can do. <laughs> Uh, that's plus two because I am what, what is it to unlock a thing in 5th edition? Is it sleight of hand? It is so. proficiency in the thieves toolkit. I believe I have that. Well, I mean, Nako also, I'm sure, has that. So why don't you let him yep. do it since he found well, it? Well, because he's rolling nature, so why can't I do He's also a rogue. Okay. Well, yeah, so, but I think I'm also proficient in this thing, so please let me do something for once. Thanks. You do everything. You, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Guys, it's, it's all right. Nako is busy with the shelves, so, uh, Lake gets in close with the, uh, with the, uh, um, floor fish. With the chest. 17. Yeah, so... Um, oh, yeah, and meanwhile, there, yeah, Hagar eats... Tools. Hagar eats half-rotten fish guts and successfully keeps it down. Uh, it's, it's just plus my proficiency with it, right? Um, proficiency plus dexterity. Okay, I... Well, it's just my proficiency then. <laughs> huh, I wonder if our rogue has a better dexterity. <laughs> All right. Well, um. Are there anything from the jars? Um, yes. You successfully identify, or you successfully realize that three of the smaller vials are magic potions. You can't learn more about what they do, but you can certainly pocket them. So. Uh, and then can I give a can I have a go at the? Yeah, go well, ahead. Well, that that is what. No, uh, I punch it. Let me punch it. Open. Well, actually, here's the thing. Um, the the reason you failed so horribly is that you didn't see the trap. Oh. What do I have I'm to roll to avoid traps? I'm not to punch it anymore. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, double check here. Do do do. Yep, needle springs out as soon as you put the little um, 
as soon as you put the thieves tools in, or the lock picks in, okay. and you take one piercing damage plus eleven poison damage. And yes. you must roll a constitution saving throw. Okay. Oh, proficient. No, I'm not proficient in that game. Okay. Okay, you now have the poisoned status effect for the next hour. Okay. So that is, uh... So that's actually only one damage because that disadvent that uh, that gets rid of all my temporary hit points. So buy uh, armor of Agathus and one hit point, and then poisoned. Yep, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. How many? How much? How much for the next does hour? Does armor of Agathus give you ten? Oh, so you should take two. You cast it low. No, I took a. And oh, oh, that's right, that's right. I, uh, it's eleven poison damage, so yeah, that's right. Okay, two damage. Uh, this... Does does Grunash possibly have anything to get rid of poison? Not that I'm seeing. All right. I was uh, actually looking for that, but I've got nothing. I mean, if we just take a short rest, then I can just. <laughs> well, I need to take another. Yeah, rest. No, it's just a short one. That's like an. It's like an hour. Whatever. <laughs> I don't um, feel so good. Oh. By the way, Grenache, when you, Mr. When you DM, head back up, I don't feel so good. <laughs> when you head back at up into that upper hallway, you notice something. All the Kotor are gone. Dun dun dun. Guys, I think we got a problem here. Now nah, we're fine. I mean, no, we're not. So, anyway, I'd like to hit the chest yeah. open. I'd we like we did give them heart. an entire night to organize a new defense against us. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and so, um, what are y'all going I... to do about that chest? Yeah, I'm going to open it. Okay, well, I would like to open the chest using my gear mm. tools, but that's also fine. Your plan C. <laughs> okay. Oh god. <laughs> Do I hit the chest? I uh, you don't have to roll to hit inanimate objects. <laughs> okay. see. see, you probably shouldn't because you might damage whatever's inside if it's something, you know, breakable. Seven damage. Alright, uh well you you, you crack some of the slats. And uh, Grenache, you notice something interesting. That, um, that giant stone slab in the center of the room there looks like there are some uh, scrape marks along the ground next to it. It's not like built out of the floor. It looks like it's, it was put there and it's movable. Okay, Although trying. you can't imagine what kind of strength you would need to move a solid stone, um, a solid slab of stone that big. What's the distance between the slab of stone and the edge of the room? Um, a few feet. Like, there's enough room that, uh, Theoretically, you could um, move the stone entirely off uh, where it is right now without moving it out of that basin it's in. I'm going to try and leverage myself so that I'm using my feet to try and push the stone across try and figure out what's going on there. Roll athletics with advantage. I feel that Julia would check for magic and fail horribly because she's not a very good wizard. <laughs> That's probably. <laughs> <laughs> so well, here's the thing. You know, you put a lot of strength 
into pushing that stone. And you think that, given the fact that you're deep underwater, it might have moved, but there's something holding it in place. Something that's lending it even more strength than uh, what it looks like. Okay. There must be something here, then, that's... <sighs> I'm going to try and look around, see if, see if I can find if, it, like, is, if there's some sort of lever or some catch that's just blocking movement for it. That would be investigation. And investigation, Lake, you notice that the basin appears to be empty. Okay. Aside from the water, but that you're, you're swimming through that. Must have taken whatever he was guarding with then. Hey, uh, Maker, you want to roll for a check on this chest? Yes. Well, how do I do that? Uh, dexterity um, plus proficiency in the. Well, you don't need to roll investigate because you know that the poison needle is there, but disarming the trap is also a thieves' tools check. Uh. uh. Oh, I didn't turn. Sorry, you kind of press it. Roll thieves tools because I'm proficient in it. So what would I be rolling? Um, plus dex. Uh, Dexterity plus your proficiency plus bonus. Plus proficiency. Tools, toolkits basically work as uh, skills, but you need a kit in order to use them. I mean, it basically operates the same way as sleight of hand, so... Yeah. If you're proficient in okay, both, what, then it would be the same role. For proficiency, but like, what is the actual... What's your dex bonus? Yeah, it's the uh, same as always. D20 plus dex plus proficiency. So like if you have if you're proficient in a deck skill you can roll that and we'll just say it's uh, oh hey, oh my 26 yeah nicely done <laughs> poison poison needle trap <laughs> stick your dagger in so that the poison needle comes out and you just sort of you use your uh, the pincher pincers that come with your toolkit to just sort of Twist it to the side so it'll won't it won't won't work anymore. You still need to uh, unlock the thing though, and that's the same. It's the same roll because it's still your thieves' tools. So with my investigation, do I manage to find anything in that room to help move the stone block? You are confident that it is entirely empty. Aside from that, uh, aside from the stone slab. What am I not thinking of? Can I give the, um, can I give the, the potions I picked up from the shelf to uh, Lady Ariel? Because, you know, she's like magic and she probably knows more about that. All right. Yeah, sure, I say in an extremely Julia voice. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. They're the same, same name for the same character. Sorry. Well, you. I thought Lady Serial, I meant. I said Lady Ariel, because it's like, oh, oh you're ready. Yes. yes. <laughs> Two elf characters. Well, yeah, um, well I meant this the, the lock quickly springs open. Turns out the most complicated bit on this chest was that trap. And inside, you find a giant pile of coins. Nice. How many? Wait, let's, let's share the coins. I agree. You get 2,800 copper. You know what? I'll just write it down. That would be good, yeah. 2,800 copper. How many of us are there? Six. Six. Oh, that divides nicely. Into 466.6. We'll let Nico uh, take all the uh, all the extra coins because he's the one who actually unlocked the stuff. 
I think that's right, fair. 467 for... Okay, so 466 for most for six seven. Nako who gets 467. I'm sure that works out broadly. Okay, uh... So... 706 doesn't work either. 117 for Nako and um, 116 for the rest of us. Broadly. I need to figure out Oh, there it is. So it was um, 116 for silver. Yeah, 466 six copper. Okay. Um, 40 and 6 is 6 for everyone except Nako, who gets 7. Um, six is... um, we can just have the art objects. I don't care. Unless you really want me well, to do there's, six, there's six 25 GP art objects, so we each get one, presumably. Yep. Um, I, call, yeah, I yes. call a silver amulet. I, mean, I thought that was 6.2. 6. You should probably silver. keep the art objects together until you can sell them off. Ah, uh, fine. No, I actually want to keep the amulet. I've decided. So you it's 4, 6, 6, 6, 1, 17. Well, if you want, but there's this giant how much, how much? tentacle monstrosity emblazoned upon the uh, amulet. Ugh. Like that makes me like it more, not less. <laughs> I would like Hagar to wear a black velvet sash, and when we get a chance, he's going to write mayor on it. But he can't <laughs> write. Really Sorry, how much stuff am I getting again? Like, what, so what are the numbers again? Sorry. Uh, for you, it's um, rounded up, not down. So you get 117 silver. Um, and, 467 copper. Yeah, and I forget how much gold. 40 seven. Is, seven. It's seven gold for seven him. Seven gold. Oh, and I need to give that to Julia as well. Christ, how much bloody money does she have? A lot. She's got tons of the... 632 gold she's got. Now. Oh, is that it? And... 200 plus... 116... 316 silver. And... How much copper did I say everyone gets? 318 plus... It was... 466 for everybody except Nako. 318 plus 466. 784 copies she's got. Who's been letting her get so much money? Well, they, they were. They kind of got well paid by the adventures they went through before you showed up. I had to sleep outside in the village. No one sprung for the hotel room for me. <laughs> You didn't ask. <laughs> you seemed fine. <laughs> oh, horrible people. <laughs> I'm going to go hit this thing. I mean, punching the chest works, so clearly punching the thing in here is going to be great. Ah, helping hands. Uh... Does a 15 hit its armor class? Again, you do not need to roll to hit an inanimate object. I will Out always roll to hit an inanimate object. <laughs> Outside of combat, no less. Well, sadly, this seems to be some sort of really hard rock. So all you successfully do is chip a couple of your uh, shark teeth. All right. I think maybe this room is uh is a little bit over. Um I'm th I'm thinking that this room is like the uh the the Skyrim dungeon room where it's just a shortcut out of the second part of the dungeon. Can I check out this pool here or has that already been I I already out? did that and I I got nothing. It is okay. empty now of whatever it may have held. Mm. Okay. The contents appear to have disappeared along with its guard. All right. Uh, I feel like maybe we should. I mean, okay. As far well, okay. We've got three options. I guess the first option is checking out this room some more. 
Um, I rolled a 16 for investigate. You do not uncover anything that Grenache hasn't figured out. So what do we know? Just that there's some possibility this thing could move, but we aren't able to move it? Something like that? Yes. And I may, I may uh, remind you all that uh, in the last session, you uh, picked up an orb from the high priest's yeah. staff and Ooh. identified it as a sort of key-like object. Yep. And in the room guarded by the water elemental, you discovered a uh, receptacle for a round object. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we all figured that out. I think it's just a matter of if there's anything else we should investigate first. I was, I was thinking maybe we should go back out and see if the Quotoa are like still out there or maybe we should just keep going and I mean, let's like, press on right after let's all. just keep going yeah okay hagar is a man of action and um julia is a woman who wants to roll another arcana check on this thing okay i can do an arcana check i'm not very good at arcana though yeah but, and yeah. i guess i'll i might as well do an investigation check just to see if there's anything that nope okay i see nothing Let's go. Orb time. Uh, I think we like three of us need to stand in a semicircle and all put our hands on the orb at the same time to no. activate it. I think I made that joke last time. <laughs> you probably did. Well, it's um, not a it's not a yellow orb. <laughs> I got grabs the orb because I think I was the one carrying it for some reason. Oh, because I'm yeah, we, strong? Yeah, we gave it to you because you didn't have a magic item yet. And you gave me a keyhole orb. Well yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he did have a magic item, as it turns out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I lied to you all, and I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a politician to me. Hagar grabs the orb out of his backpack and just slam dunks it into the hole. Yes, thank you. <laughs> A swirl I mean, of mystical energy. What was that? Uh, don't worry. Oh, it's, it's something about energy. A swirl of mystical Let's... energy fills the, the the well area. And in a flash, you can see into a large stone chamber on the other side of what is obviously a magical portal. However, it is this uh, stone chamber is not empty. Instead, there seems to be a uh, a humanoid figure, um, green green scales covering his skin. You never saw a triton before, but you imagine that this must be what they look like. Can it see us? So it appears to be reacting. It does. It reacts immediately, in fact, and jumps. Uh, well, first, it uh, it seems to cast a spell or use a magic item. You're not quite sure. It's uh, it's nothing that you're quite familiar with, but it then immediately jumps through the portal and uh, after a moment of uh, getting used to the sudden pressure and the uh, the fact that it's jumping from air into water um, it looks around and says at last someone has followed us hi yes uh, we have we we have been looking for you uh, no I mean not you specifically I don't I don't know who you are I'm sure you're very nice but for your people as it were yes does this guy look like a king? Ha, have you guys been imprisoned? Or are you, like, fighting something? I mean, I know maybe you're busy, but if you could just give us, like, a quick rundown of what's been going on for the last few, what is it, like, a couple months? or uh, That would be really good, because a lot of people are wondering where you guys went. Well, sadly enough, you're not that far off. This portal you see behind me, this leads into the elemental plane of Earth. 
a network of caverns near the prime material, but not close enough for us to find a way back. When we first noticed the Quotoa coming out of the depths, we immediately mobilized and surged down to where we knew the low, to where we knew an entrance would be. Enough, they were guarding it, not in force. That, honestly, that. Sure. But the last few of them retreated. They retreated into this uh, portal below me. We, well, you can see just from here, it looks close enough to the Underdark that, well, it seemed like that was the portal we were looking for. We chased it in, and then the portal closed oh, behind book. us. He's got that book we couldn't read. I think... You may very well have made me again, because I seem to carry a lot of this stuff now. Yeah, I think it was you, actually. I showed him the book. Let me just remind you, you, you showed the book to the adventurers before, and they mentioned that it was a record that the uh, the Tritons had left behind so that people could follow them. All right. Ah, okay. Um, so, you, show the book. so you, you just packed up your entire civilization to fight these Quotoa? You didn't leave anyone behind at all? Well, we don't really have that much of a civilization to begin with. Right, but like, you know, the kids or whatever. The kids live in the elemental plane of water, along with all the other young and most of the Triton race. Oh, I see. Okay. Because, yeah, everybody was we very the, concerned. We are the Sentinels. We guard the oceans of this world against the things that should remain out of it. Like, for instance, uh, giant squids that take over people's minds? Have you seen it? No, but we met people who did. Well. That is both fortunate and unfortunate. Fortunate in that it has not had a chance to take your minds. Unfortunate in that we need to track it down. The, yeah. foul water of, the foul water of these caves, I thought, was an indicator of its presence. But it was not there. <clears throat> but it was not here when we stormed it. Obviously, we understand why now. But it still may be around. Are you sure you didn't encounter anything of the sort? Um, it can, has the ability the to affect minds. Um, hmm. in that case, uh, can I, what can I roll to see if it's actually messed with my brain? I'm, Illusions I'm are intelligence saving assistant. throws. Okay. But so, mind control well, is a wisdom saving throw. Uh, I haven't seen anything about illusions, but, uh, let me check mind control because I have a pretty good wisdom score. <laughs> You are feeling very paranoid right now. I am. Holy okay, shit. Okay, well, I mean, I guess if, if we can just roll that, then I'll go ahead and roll those too. <laughs> I'm not sure Hagar has a mind to be full, but if he does, then he's rolling 16 to get out of it. And... I'm just rolling like garbage tonight, and it sucks, and I hate it. And I guess uh, Julia's lady gets a 14. <laughs> Those of you who were out rolled a 14 or better feel confident that uh, your minds are seeing, have seen what they ought to see. Okay. Guys, we're safe. Okay, 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 all right. Um, we oh, did we run into a stone slab that we couldn't move. Yes, hmm. we also ran into a... Um, it was that village I mean, of fishmen. Recall... Yes. Well, recall the um, you know the, yeah, the guy we got the orb from who said something about the master or whatever not being there at the moment. Oh yeah, you know? that's right. 
So, I mean, obviously, his word isn't necessarily worth a lot. But we could, now that we have a, a Triton who can speak, you know, the language or whatever, he can communicate with Kotoa, right? No, because they speak under common. He speaks uh, Aquan. Aquan. But didn't he just use something to learn a spell? To I, I don't know. I guess you didn't say explicitly. I, I thought Actually, you were implying I... that he was using a spell like tongues or whatever. That was well, the tri- p- priestess seen... in the fish village who were using the spells so the king could communicate with us. No, no, but yeah, this guy he, just you've used seen thing. You've seen uh, the spell tongues by this point. Okay, so I, I, You know that this is different. That. Oh, okay. I think well, he just straight up in knows any case, common. It is actively, yeah, it is speaking to you in common. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Um. All right. Well, do you? Is there anything we can do for you? Or did you want to help us find uh, this bad guy? This whatever squid monster thing is. I don't know. I mean, well, we, that would our, certainly our whole job here is to find you and help you. So. Well, that would certainly help. I've indicated to the other Tritons that the portal is open. They were out exploring, and I was the one left behind to wait and watch in case the portal opened again. And so I sent a spell out to uh, let the others know that it has opened, and they will be coming in as fast as they are able to reach us. Cool and good. All right. Oh, um, can you guys help us so, check away the other fishmen? Because I need Metro City's gold back. It's very important. I get the city its gold. Um, okay, that's not important right now. Uh, well, it's, it's with it's the Sahuajan. The Th- those are the ones that have been attacking ships. Yeah. They'll have to uh, go back to their village first. Yeah, so... Um, all right, so would you prefer to wait here for comrades to return while we go explore further, or uh, what? what's your preference, uh, Mr. Triton? They will know what to do. I can okay. accompany you for the time being. All right. All right. Do you want to come take a look at the stone thing that we were incompetently flailing at? All right. But actually, you don't get that far. Oh, Okay. <gasps> because Shit. there's something in the next room. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, fuck. chill out. <laughs> not gonna chill out. Ah, get off me, Judy. Get back there. Make me chill out. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Some uninvited guests and a former guest who has returned, I see. How interesting. Well, my uninvited guests, what may I ask is the reason for your calling? Um, sorry. Who are you? I am one without a name. I need okay. no name. Aside, like perhaps, one? from I Master. The mayor? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not really into that. Um, so I'm just going to call you Bob. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, so, Bob, how how are you? doing today Hmm. well it wasn't a very interesting day but it certainly is now well you know I'm glad to hear it's looking up for you Uh, listen you know I don't know if you know this, but you have a rather sinister manner of speaking. I think maybe if you, if you're you know you could you could work on that a little bit. Be try to be a little friendlier, like you know, is that I could help you with that. I'm very good at at you know getting along with people. <laughs> Clearly, friendly. Oh, I can be very friendly, yeah, Aurelia. Sure you can. Oh shh. 
Uh, Let's see. Oh, so a mic. You are Aurelia. Mm -hmm. You are a creature of two worlds, and it seems you have you're having trouble deciding which one you wish to belong to, but. You don't need to worry. I can help you with both. I can provide you the army you need to take back your birthright. And I know where your mother is. Don't listen to this fuck. She's not from this... She's not from this dimension. Did you know that? Uh... I can tell you where she's from, but... You'll need to do something for me. You'll need to open your mind to me. Well, well, you know, I don't really think I'm going to do and that. As Lake, what a curious creature you are! Not I prettier know, than you. I know about the voices. I know what they tell you to do. Don't, don't and shame. I can make them both stop. Yeah, no, I'm good right where I am. Thanks. You, you will you not need to worry to about anyone inside your head again. So long Except as you, you open your mind. No, I'm to closing me. my fucking mind to you, Gwen. You should have stopped like two minutes ago. <laughs> Oh, and Hagar, was it? Mike? So, so loyal you are, so dedicated to your city. That is an admirable trait. But I am afraid it is one I can use against you. I can bring a Kotoan army up from the deep so large that it will overwhelm your city's defenses and they will slaughter every last man, woman, and child before reinforcements have any hope of showing up. Yeah, no one, no one threatens Metro City. No one. Well, um, e you can save it Lightning if you want. You can save all its inhabitants, and I swear I shall not harm a hair upon the head of any who dwell within Metro City if you open your mind to me. I fry the lightning, Jeff. Okay, can we let Bobbin do the dramatic thing that he's obviously been preparing instead of just being an asshole? No, no, I, I don't mind. Just as long as you uh, understand that it is, in, in fact... It's not in character, but I'm happy to... Yeah, I'll let him do the thing and then do that. So, yeah, I, do the other three. I, I don't mind the commentary. It just it just realize that it is talking over you if I interrupt. Right, no, I meant the attack. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm well, saying let's let uh, that's, the that's thing fine, do this before we start that, combat. Because, that's, you know. fine, but that's fine, sub G, sub DM. That's fine, Bobbin can do his thing, but that's... Uh, Packard's reaction. It's actually not attack. Wait, are you attacking? Yeah, uh, I will do, but you can do the speech to the other three first. Well, actually, here's the thing when you attack, it disappears. Oh, uh, cool. It's... Oh, sorry, I mean, um, hmm, and then reappears a few seconds later. That I wasn't fair. It might not be there. <laughs> <laughs> that okay, was rude. So in, in reaction to seeing that, I want to use my holy symbol, use one of his charges to activate true seeing. Okay. Well, um, the wind can't exactly blow, but a, a current just sort of comes out from the uh, from the holy symbol and um, yeah this thing is obviously an illusion and nothing is actually inside this chamber time forward and just go okay where are you 
Stop playing games with us. <laughs> oh, but I love games. Yeah, you would. Grenache? Idiot. Such a shame what happened to your parents, and why it hasn't even been two years, has it? You must be having trouble figuring out where to go, what to do. I'll find them eventually, you... and I don't need your help. But I can provide you with such guidance, and I can do much to help you locate your parents. You will do nothing for Why me. Why didn't this thing make that offer to me? Just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> They could have also been interested in that, but hey. <laughs> well, Nako, the spy. You didn't. You may have told your friends that you're working for a secret master, but I'm betting you haven't told them who. The Order? Hmm? <laughs> Such a vague name for Okar's secret service. But of course, what were you to do? You can't get power in that muddy little village where you came from, and it's not like a human empire will ever give a goblin a noble title. The power behind the throne? That could be even better. I should know. And I can give you much power, so long as you open your mind to me. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I'd like to make a report of this. <laughs> <laughs> and it also offers Serial the chance to explore the uh, the rest of the world because it controls the oceans. But uh, Julie is not here, so I'm not doing the whole spiel. There's stuff on land. Uh, all right, so. I've thought about your offer, and yeah. I think that I would prefer to to meet in person before giving a giving a final decision. <laughs> Very well. Think it over, if you like. I will be here, and it disappears again. Um, you can hey, be can I, you, Arcana. can I Arcana to see, like, if I can find out where it was broadcasting from? Like, if I if I know what kind of spell it was and like how far, how close it would have to be in order to do that. Okay. The 13 um, is not high enough. Nah, this is, my 13 isn't high enough. I've just been rolling with garbage. But, like, this sucks. However, the Triton uh, enters the room now and says, uh, uh, You realize, I hope, you can't trust anything it says. You will oh, be God, puppets no. if you allow it to control you. I was telling it to fuck off the entire time. I threw my thing at it. Now my thing doesn't work for the rest of the day. Yes, well, but, maybe you should think about your actions before you, you know, leap into battle or whatever. Well, I hope you're not thinking too hard. I will never do but that. There is, there is one hope, though. The fact that it was able to appear like this as an illusion in its lair. It can only do that when it itself is within its lair. If it was gone before, it is definitely here now, in one of these rooms. Okay. Hmm. Oh, speak. Speaking of which, I wonder where it could be. I'm actually thinking over here. Well, let's take a look at this one first. Yeah, I mean, everybody else. Oh, is there, so that so. must be the entrance. That must be the entrance to the Underdark. Okay, cool. Uh, Do you know how so, we open it? I gotta have question. I don't think that you can on this side, at least not with being able to somehow communicate with something on the other side. 
Have any of you heard of, do you, any of you know what an airlock is? Is it like uh, I can't hold breath? Um. <laughs> okay, since all the players the probably know, I'm just going to say the Triton explains to you what an airlock is and why it is preventing that stone slab from moving. Okay, Aurelia maybe already knew what an airlock was. So what happens if we hit the airlock really hard? <laughs> um, then it breaks, and the safety mechanisms prevent it from ever being used again. I got a whole lot of ideas. Just a Triton, what about in here? I mean, I can't find anything, but... The only other idea that I have. Also, what Over is here? Doing? Yeah. Well, uh, it sort of just sniffs the water. I'm not quite sure how that works, but he also um, sort of rubs his hand in the sort of residue in the basin. And huh. I believe, yes, tadpoles. Tadpoles. This is where the Kotoa had their tadpoles. Oh! Oh, we found the sexatorium. Okay, well, gross, that's gross, 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 we gross, 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 gross. You mean my well, sex, <laughs> sex cove? Man, I can't tell you it's sexatorium. God damn it. All right, so are we looking for another way in then? Like... Yeah, um, maybe... Oh, wait, the priest I mean, was in is, here! Well, if it's... There, there is one other room we attack, but I'm pretty sure that place doesn't have an entrance. Maybe also over here. Oh, what was that well, time has passed. In? Time has passed, and the... Oh, that's right. I was going to do this as soon as you... Uh, after you managed to actually see this thing. Everybody gets one last history check to... Figure out what an abolith is. Okay. Now you don't get advantage, hey. but the DCs are lower than what they used to be. Mystery, <laughs> I'm bad at history. And this is, of course, the one time I roll really well. <laughs> Fine. Oh, oh boy. Is everything. You know, I've been rolling things that I'm proficient in all night and just, like, getting nothing above an 11, but now yeah, that I'm rolling that's something... that's how dice that... work. <laughs> yeah. They're random. That's the point. I'm, I'm on a minus two, Captain okay. Sarcastic. So the Okarans, who rolled a 10 or higher, that would be Grenache, Nako, Lake, or Hagar. And Hagar actually gets... Gets an even better bonus because. No, uh, no, actually, I got a five. No, he's just listing the people yeah. who come from Okar. Uh, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, you remember a legend about the ascended emperor Federn. Uh, Federn is most famous for the uh, the time when the empire and the elves clashed. Rumor has it that. He also managed to reach the coastline during his reign, and uh, when he did, he fought twisted cults of fish worshipping humans who lived along the Rendell Sea. Uh, Federn defeated the cult, tore down its idols, and when he ascended to godhood, he strode into the ocean and smote the disgusting creatures they worshipped, so that they could never enslave another living being. Sounds kind of religiously intolerant to me, but okay. Nako. Nako, strangely enough, you remember another story. This one from the Gods of the Untamed Lands. That uh, the God oh, yeah. of Frost. Nice. The God of Frost, Fwad, uh once sent the frozen sons and daughters into the depths of the ocean to claim it for their domain. Now the creatures down there used sweet words to turn brother against brother, but Fwad gathered his loyal children and drove the monsters from their homes. 
Now, Aurelia, remind me what you got. I just got a 12. 12? Well, it's that's enough. Legends imply that those under deep things that we've been fighting all this time are that thing's kids. Well, um, actually, because Oops. you got to see the monster that now, uh, you remember that um, the two chief gods of Relgoth, Protodor and Antidor, who represent the sun and the moon, once set aside their eternal feud to defend their people from the vicious fish monsters. Mm -hmm. Finally, Serial, uh, she also remembers that there was once a legend, uh, there, there's an old legend, not very popular, that says that the Mother Tree didn't create the elves just to protect it from all other humanoid uh, encroachers, but specifically to defend it against giant fish monsters that attempted to infect her roots and use the magic of the mother tree to enslave the creatures of the surface. Hmm. Wow, this thing might be bad news. Yeah, you think? So if the fish are its kids, then what happens if we kill it's, the tadpoles? It's not, it's not, it's, the Aboleth is not father of these things is just the ruler of them and we're gonna fucking oh, murder it and they're gonna have to find a new god damn it you've been thinking of that one for a while no it no it just sort of came to me actually well the uh as you enter the main chamber you see that once again all the kotoa are gone however the uh the triton stops looks to his left and says it is down here. I follow along. Okay, hang on. Before we follow, though, I want to go back up to this room up here. Oh, yeah, that room where... And just check it out. Because we didn't get to look in it before. All right. Okay, well, I'm an idiot, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, honestly... Um... As you might have suspected, the Kotoa took anything of value with them when they left. Yeah, found it. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. All right. So if any of you have anything you need to cast immediately before battle... I need to give everyone a rousing 10-minute speech about the importance of checking for traps before Thanks. you um, open the box. <laughs> oh, okay. I oh, just got it. The, right, the room yeah. full of bones is the place that has the... the uh, that It's his lair. Okay, that's why it was empty before, but full of bones. Okay, yeah. so after that 10-minute speech, you will get six temporary hit points. Um, and right. then I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm in front when we move in okay hang on before we attack i just want to um briefly talk to hit don't worry i'm not going to accept its deal or whatever i just want chance to cast one spell and and speak to it okay guys uh, unless it attacks us right away it, just won't, won't, attack us. Us. it won't attack us right away it'll do its little sh super right that's what i figured and... okay let's 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 enter then. Okay. You guys okay, can all um, go ahead and head of me. I'm. Well, first of all, I just want to say um, before anything happens. Casting a spell. Is that before anything happens, everybody gets um, inspiration if you don't already have it. Excellent. For, resi right, for resisting the Aboleth's temptations. Dang it, I should have used it. I realize it was rather, um, well, shall we say, uh, transparent, but even so. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that uh, I just drew a purple line, and I would suggest you guys start behind it. Fair. Because past that yeah. purple line, you notice that the room is swarming with electric eels. And See, I told you they were his kids. Turn me on the villain trick. 
<laughs> you will need to roll intelligence saving throws. Oh, nah. mm, I'm not super good at those. I'm not great at that, but I'm okay. I'm minus two on those. Oh no, they're real eels. Uh, that's me, and then that's Julia. So long, guys. I'm its slave now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just think that the eels are real. That's fine. Well, yes. I did. I did activate my amulet uh, just in case. So, if there are any, I'd be able to identify it. Yep. Okay, so everybody who rolled a 14 or better, and Grenache, you are able to see these eels for what they are. Illusions. Phantoms. Holy shit, guys, those, there's a ton of eels in there. Wow. No, no. They're yeah, they're fake. fake. What? Oh. Oh. More bloody tricks on this damn thing. Yeah, I should have known that, shouldn't have I? Uh, These eels look delicious. Besides the eels, also the uh... oh jeez, the... like <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. So the um, the Triton completely believes in the eels too. And then I and then I guess we, they they tell us that the eels aren't real. So we're like, oh, sure. no, actually, you, you cannot stop seeing the eels despite. Knowing intellectually that they aren't there. Okay. This is a phantom spell, so it exists inside your head, not in uh, space. Okay. Well, I don't plan on going past that purple line either way. Like, Lake is good sniping the Aboleth from out here. That's fine. I take a step forward. Well... Then you might want to roll initiative, and what? I might want to actually reveal where it's located. Where it's located. Yeah, there it goes. So it's attacking us. I thought we would give it, get a chance. I wanted to, to talk to it. Yeah. It knows your resolve. It, it, it has it been listening to you. you oh right! It can like <laughs> hear us and shit. Oh, if oh you're well, go there, oh, then I'm it's has go ears. It's Hagar. Let me just roll my initiative, oh, nice. I guess. Does she get any oh, bonuses damn. to initiative? Oh, Hell. wow. Okay. Uh, she just gets her dexterity. Okay. And, um, well, I was going to remind Nako to roll twice, but apparently I don't have to. <laughs> he doesn't wow, have to. He's learned. Or just rolled back. I mean, uh, don't get better than twenty. So, uh, who? I go before S Aurelia. No, Aurelia. Oh wait, no. What's? Yeah. I think um, you go last. Do I go last? That sucks. Yeah, um, you go last. And I even rolled halfway decently. Has, uh, has Bob rolled his initiative? Um, I just set its lair action to 20. Now I will roll its monster. I will not I have a the actual initiative. Uh, what, did, what, what initiative do the eels get? They are a... Um, they are effectively a hazard in the room. And you will take damage for trying to navigate through them. Is that true for even people like me? No, because you saved. Yes. Specifically to the people who still believe those are real eels. They are a hazard. Otherwise, so they are... Get hit. So you're saying that we don't get hit by the eels which aren't, we, don't, we know don't exist. You're saying that that's the rules of the game. Huh. But the Apparently people who do think they're real do get damaged by it. Right. <laughs> this Triton may as well not be here. Oh, God. I can't believe this was, was the that... thing protecting the ships. Was that the <laughs> Triton or was that the... That, that was the Aboleth. Oh, good. Aboleth gets a zero initiative. 
Um, <laughs> but also a twenty. It is a legendary uh, creature. Bobbin, I have a quick question before we start. Um, I threw my javelin at it. Is the thing that uses the magic the use of the command words, or is it actually the hitting of something? Uh, well, if you threw it without um, commanding it to turn into lightning, then it just sailed on through like a normal javelin. Oh, no, I turned the lightning on. All right. Well, it's still a magic javelin, and you can oh. use it as such. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, if, you, if your fairy fire doesn't hit, then I will try and do mine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I well, I want to see the full initiative order, but I was kind of thinking that I might um, delay my thing, and you can just use Fairy Fire, and I'll use try to use Tasha's Hideous Laughter, because if I can get it to skip one of its turns, that would be pretty This useful. is true. This is true. All right, so has everybody typed in your current initiative score? I believe I so, have. yes. Well, Nako, looks like you Nako haven't. Nako definitely hasn't, yeah. All right, then I will arrange everybody. I'll move Cool Kid up because my policy is PCs go before NPCs. Cool. Also, you can see what the Triton's name is. You never really asked him. Uh, I, I, oh, I, I asked him. I, yeah, his I, name's Grumbungus. <laughs> if you if you asked, uh, it it got lost in the uh, mix. No, I can't. But, I can't see what it is. Yeah, I actually can't see it. Name. his name. Yeah. Huh. You well, have his to... name is. But his name is Koros. Okay. Koros. Yeah. All right. So can I uh, voluntarily delay my? Initiative. And you can you can ready, just your, ready an action. Yeah, you can ready your action for a specific um uh, for for something happening. You say if some if this happens, then I will use my action for that. Okay. Can the thing that is this happening be Grenache finishing his turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, or no, once, sorry, not Grenache. Uh, Serial finishing her turn. Yes, once Serial has gone, I will use my action to, and you okay, do need to and specify. Okay, I will use my action to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Oh, on. no, that's that's the um, that's the the layer that goes on 20. That's not the Aboleth itself. The Aboleth itself goes on zero. I thought, I thought Bobbin was implying that it gets to take both turns. Yeah, and it gets to take other turns, too. Oh. It's oh. a legendary monster. It Fuck. gets to cheat. Yeah, I, I was I was assuming that like for the purpose of Tasha's hideous laughter, the layer turn counts as its turn in terms of. I mean, I could be wrong. Well, but... like I just, like I said, it it gets a lot of turns, but um, I believe I'm not sure if the layer action gets hit by um, get get. Well, well it, it will not get to save against your spell on its layer action turn. Oh, it won't. Oh, yes. okay. So that's what that's... you're worried about. Well, that's what I was assuming. It makes the most sense for me to go no, right it's... before it's actual. It gets a very specific list of things it can do on a, on its layer action. Although... And uh, stuff that goes off on not among them. Will, will Tasha's Hideous Laughter prevent it from doing stuff on its layer action? If it's something that the Aboleth itself is doing? Like... It is something that the Aboleth needs to choose to do, so okay. I, I would say so, yes. Okay. All right. In that case, I'm still going to do that. So you're going to cast that straight away then? or No, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to wait until the next three people go, because I don't want them to give the Aboleth a chance to save before the layer oh, action. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's true. Okay, then. So Aurelia is holding... Her action, then Nago. <laughs> As always, you get advantage on this, the first round of combat. Go oh, fuck it up. <sighs> uh, 
A 16 does not hit its armor class. Yikes. Yeah. And these things are tough. It swipes with one of its tentacles, and the bolt skips away into the uh, into the rocks behind it. Um. 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 Among the bones. Sorry, you want to what? Hide among the bones. Using stealth. Okay. Probably. It, uh, it, yeah, it, it can see you with uh, passive perception. And uh, you, you rolled so low, in fact, that you know very well that you are not hidden where you are right now. You think you're hiding, and then you look at your ears poking up above the b- pile of bones, and you're like, oh. Mm. Grenache. Enough games. Charge forward. And spear. Nope. Okay, um, I would suggest anybody who does not want to get hit by a fairy fire avoid this area here, because that's where I'm about to aim it. Once it's my turn. I could probably avoid it either way. Um, okay, so that one have hit. So, I'm guessing Flurry of Blows. May as well at this point. Yep, may as well. Uh, that's a no. No, a 16 still does not hit. Does that? But a 20 does. Okay, good. It's doable. Okay. Nice. Six damage. Hey. See, that's uh, bit of damage you've dealt, just and uh, it's immediately using legendary actions. Okay. I believe your armor class is higher than 14. Yep. It doesn't hit me. So it makes some sort of snarling noise and swings its tail at you, and you duck under it just in time. Also, uh, did did Grenache... No, of course. Yeah, Grenache saved. Grenache has the item. Yeah. So... Okay. So I think what Julia would do, she'd start singing. Um, let's get that sweet AC bonus, um, which I need to figure out. So yeah, she's singing. Um, she probably wouldn't walk up and hit it. I don't it's- know. She might. She does have a whip that gives her range, but... Yeah, she'd go 10 feet away and whip it Um, with one hand. That's uh, not... There we are. Let's hit it. No advantage. That's 20 to hit, which I assume hits 1d4 plus... uh, Yes, previous actions do uh, reflect on current ones, so yes. Thanks, mate. Um... No attack bonus is 1d4 plus 4. Uh, 8 slashing damage. Okay. That's, uh... um, I don't 
think she had taken action point just yet. So that's the end of the turn. All right. It responds with a tail whip, which in fact has a 10 foot reach as well. Okay, so it's got range. 18. I uh, need to figure out her AC with this intelligence is. With, with her mage armor, it's 19. 19. Oh, that's um, that's my um. I don't want to be looking at Hagar's intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her int is four, so nineteen. Oh, she's figured it all out. Yeah, nineteen. So AC. Yep, with mage armor and everything. So that doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mage armor plus dex plus four, nineteen. So, just like Gradash, uh, she successfully slaps it away and avoids taking a hit. Okay, so uh, casting Tasha's Hideous Laughter now. It has to make a wave. Now, watch me get sad when its wisdom modifier turns out to be like plus 10. Probably. Wow. Let's see here. It's... Wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> yes! Don't <Sucked> <laughs> so bad, even the DM is laughing. <laughs> I'm I, being I, in character. Yeah, he's in character. <laughs> 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 All right, but you Took don't got damage. you don't got a lieutenant to to wail on while it's distracted this time. Yeah. Hagar, yeah. but delay, do, just delay your you turn. You effectively until... skip its. Uh... I mean, I've got advantage now anyway because it's on the floor laughing. No, 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 no. Delay your turn until after it goes. Because if we wait until after it goes, it just straight up won't get a turn. Mm, okay. Uh, on my, I delay my action. My action will be to swim over and twat it when after its turn. Well, well, you, you, you need to swim now. over now. Yeah, if you swim over now and then just delay your action to hit hit it until... It's, it's, it's only things that deal damage to it that yeah. will cause it to get a saving throw. Yeah, <laughs> which is why I'm yeah. fearlessly... So yeah, uh, you can run up. Which is why I am fearlessly casting Fairy Fire right here so that the Abolith is caught in it, but none of my uh, friends are, and it has to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, lucky for you that dexterity is the reason why it got a zero initiative. Yeah. <laughs> it's got minus one dexterity. Yes! it ha Guys, all of our attacks have advantage against it now. But they already have advantage while it's prone. Well, yeah. this is yeah, going to continue after it stops stop laughing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it is fairy fired. It lasts for a minute as opposed to whenever yeah. it saves. As, as, long as, as long as you don't use any concentration spells, but yeah. No, I'm not going to be using any just, concentration so spells. Okay, just from uh, just did reminding you in case you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I've, I've updated its status up. effects. All right, so let me mark <clears throat> off one of my spell slots here. All right. Well, uh, Koros is picking up what you guys are putting down, so he is going to wait as well until the Avalith goes. And the Abolith goes, misses its turn, but it does get another saving throw. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's going to end anyway, though, because we're just going to start beating the shit out of it now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I will not bother rolling for that until after you guys have all attacked it. Great. Um, and it, it'll still be on the ground is the other good thing. So. Well, not for me. Thing. Hagar being mad as heck right. starts slamming it with its pipe. Um, I don't think I put the teeth back on so it's bludgeoning damage. Boom. Um, except that's Hagar. <laughs> that probably hits. What's its AC? Just says I remember. An 18 hits its AC. Yeah, what, what is its AC? Is a value, we don't know so yet. We don't know. It but is between it's... 18 and 17. 17. It is either 17 or 18 yeah. based on the rolls you guys have gotten. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, 1d10 plus, so 12, 12 bludgeoning damage and all my shit starts kicking in. <laughs> all your shit. All my shit. The souls of voters, past and present, start to collect around the abolith. <laughs> Have you guys ever said whether you'll vote for me? I don't vote. I don't believe in voting. They aren't constituents. They aren't constituents the anyway. Right of queens. What about the divine right of mayors? Uh, no. Let's get through this. Like a filthy Let's anarchist, see. so... Let's see. And well, you... So, uh, the Triton makes two attacks on his turn. And fails its advantage on. So that was his first failure. Hey! And he hits that with the second. Better. All right, and that is. Um, Sam. Carrying, yeah. He is carrying his weight. What's his name again? Grumbungus. No, like <laughs> Koros. Koros. Go Koros. Go. I need to write that down because Lake is canonically really good at remembering names. So now the Abolith right. has like two rolls with advantage to uh to recover. Cast so off Pashas. He's probably gonna get over it. Look how people are beating me up. Yeah. Okay. So he's back up. Well, he's not back up. He's still down, but. But that it did. You did successfully waste one of its turns. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to cheat, getting rid of turns is a good thing. Yep. Oh, yeah. We um, got rid of two of its turns. Mm -hmm. Technically. Well, but. Um, Actually, it got rid of thir three because it couldn't use legendary actions when it was disabled either. Oh, yeah. But, uh, by the way, um, Hagar, yeah. I believe you take 1d6 damage from the eels that you still believe are there. Did he make that? Is it thunder damage? It is not, actually. Is it psychic like damage? Psychic, yeah, I don't resist that. Okay. But yeah, you take a full five damage that knocks off your temporary oh, hit points. You. Oh, it's you rolling. Okay, um, yeah. Done. Yeah, well, it's, it's my damage source. I get to roll it. Yeah. Fair enough. But, <laughs> it's <mine>. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but um, it is back to Aurelia. Okay. Um, so... Aurelia is going to, just for fun, cast a Phantasmal Force on the Aboleth. <laughs> Give so it a taste of its own medicine? It's probably got a high int, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I, unfortunately, the only thing I have that decks is very fire. So i uh, going to use Phantasmal Force to create the illusion of a giant crab cracker. <laughs> descending, descending from <laughs> above. Lake high. Uh, Lake, you, you Lake goes like those little high. oyster crackers. No, like a like a thing that cracks open a cra crab leg. A big hammer. Ah. Um. Lake raises his hand for a high five and then assumes it, and then I'm assuming that uh, Aurelia doesn't return it, so he just uh, so they just put it down. Awkwardly. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, um, Lake can't see a thing. This is oh, a phantasm. This is true. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, it has to make an int saving throw. It probably will succeed, but. Yeah, probably. Actually, I, I looked it up and it's actually in uh, int investigation. Mm. I thought that was. Uh, roll. For, for the initial. And. Uh, after you get harmed by it, you can take. You can, 
No, no, no. It, it, it has to make an intelligence saving throw to start with. And if that fails the save, it creates the phantasmal object, and then it can use its action to in examine it with an int investigation check. Right, right. I am, I am reading this in real time along with you. It's okay. I haven't used this one yet, so. Well, neither had I until just now. Yeah, if I remember correctly, these things have like really high intelligence saving throws. Probably. But it, luckily, its saving throws have been garbage so, this fight, so who knows? And, mm, okay. Well, they, not all of them, as Why it turns you out. Your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was worth a shot. All right. Nako. I move uh, over here. This you will not. And then I. Stab it, stab it, stab it, stab it. Uh, you, you will not get advantage because it knew where you were, but you will it's get prone. sneak attack damage. Also, fairy fire. It will still. Get, still. Oh. You, you still will get advantage, yeah. All right. And also, all of that, all that other stuff, too. <laughs> there you go. The 24 is it? Yep, rolling. <laughs> the 18 you rolled would have hit with a nothing modifier, so go ahead. Good. Let's see, that's... That much damage to it. For my extra thing, I'd like to use the offhand dagger to attack it as well. Yep. Fair enough. Is that because it's still prone? Or because it's offhand to step onto that? Uh, and you get advantage forever because it has fairy fire. I forgot about the fairy oh. fire as well. Okay. <laughs> oh. Wow, look at, look at that. Okay. 20 and a 1. Unfortunately, you only get a 2d4 to roll. But... Because it's the offhand. Five damage. Yep. Is there a feat that you can take that allows you to add that, or is that a class feature from some class? No, that's that's just something you can do. I mean, getting the no, no, no. I mean, adding adding the 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 modifier damage to offhand attacks. Oh, well, a couple of classes have features that you can take that let you get that, and I think there might be a feat for that, but probably not. Okay. Grenache. Well, let's continue on how I began. Not with a spear. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. even the nope. even the, just nothing. the feat for dual wielder doesn't doesn't add it, so it's just class features. Yep. Yeah. I think rangers and fighters can get it. Yeah. So yeah, no, not taking any chances. Flurry of blows. Don't you get an unarmed attack as a bonus anyway? Yeah, flurry uh, gives him two unarmed attacks as a bonus. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, six damage for the first. And yes! Get to the second, yes! And wow. it's tripled because you're still a half orc. Yep. <laughs> Whoa. Still? <laughs> you gonna get that looked at at some point? <laughs> After all this time? <laughs> ah, two ones, goddammit. Hey, oh, that's, that's, another that's another two damage that we didn't do before, so. All right. Um, it is going to use a legendary action to lash out at Grenache, I believe, with disadvantage because it is relatively prone. Yeah. Oh, this is an attack. It is a legend. <clears throat> it is a legendary action, and yes, you can use a reaction against it. Yeah. Sweet. 
That's me. However, it does hit. Yep. Uh, now, how much does the 19 hit you by? Not much. Okay, well, you know what? I might as well try using cutting words and say, you know, Mr. Ambleth, I mean, sorry, Bob. Can I call you Bob? <laughs> Bob. Um, I think that really, you're not very good at your job. Like, seriously, you just waste an entire round laughing. Like, come on, man. <laughs> And I lower the 19 by 6. Yeah, that'd make, that'd make a miss. Jesus. <laughs> We're kind of chumping this guy. Why was I so afraid? <laughs> this is why boss monsters need extra actions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is seriously the reason why they have them. Your mind. Sorry. <laughs> All right, and you rolled a, a full 15 out of 15 possible damage just now. Yeah. As a reaction, since it attacked someone else, because what you have Sentinel, among other things. What a fucking dingus! <laughs> well, you know, I've got, I've got to do my thing. Um, okay, Julia, seeing that it can hit... Her and she likes not getting hit. She's gonna move back a bit and fire her crossbow at it. Okay, it, it will use its reaction now because legendary Sorry. actions. It also gets a reaction at, along with its legendary actions. Okay. And you only have the one reaction, so it gets to just do this. But a 16 uh, is lower than her armor class. So continue with your turn. Wait, what about the first roll? The 25 hits. There's nothing she can do about the 25. It has, dis it has disadvantage, remember? Oh, it's prone. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's fine. So from back here, Julia fires her longbow. Um, 20, that hits. Um... 1d8 plus 2. Well, I was going to say, actually, that um, fairy fire and being prone when you're attacking from range, those cancel out. But you got yep. the 16 with the first roll, so go ahead. Okay. Oh, um, oh helps if I do the right slash. Um, roll, roll 1d8 plus 2. Fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wrong slash. Four. Four um, piercing, and then she's gonna, because we took the long rest, she'll take the action surge and. What's your think, guys? Which bolt? Which bolt? Those it's are players with short rests, too. Does de uh, deck saves. Is which bolt a deck save? No, it's a ranged attack. Oh, it's just All a right, so remember to remember to just roll once for this, then. It's a ranged spell attack, though, if that makes a difference. No. No. But okay. the, the, the word ranged is the, the important one. Oh, oh. Yes. Yeah! Yes, it does. Is twelve lightning damage. <laughs> Get wrecked. God damn you guys, god damn. Well it's <laughs> finally it's finally gets its layer action now. And let's see here. Okay, um everybody's in water, everybody's within ninety feet, and it can see all of you. Everybody Roll a wisdom saving throw and tell me if you get less than 14. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration and roll with advantage. I see right the fuck does doing proficient. Does this, yes, um, or is this a uh, lack? Because I've still got the uh, oh, thank happen. god, I. 
Oh, that that was the first roll anyway. And oh well, whatever. I made I got fourteen, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, this is it doing this. So would the voters give it disadvantage? Oh no, the, the voters. I believe the voters thing in this case. Um, I mean, you, you are rolling saving throws, so. Uh, you, you get okay. resistance, but... Um, That's fine. Well, both of the people I'm controlling fail. Or we'll get eight and seven. Um, the eight. Uh, you, you do have inspiration that you can spend to give yourself advantage. Yes. You can always use inspiration until I tell you the damage you take. Okay, let's do that again then. Um, so this is Julia's second roll. Um, yeah. Uh, 11, and this is Hagar's second roll. It's not wise. Okay. 18 for me. Hey. Natural 20. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, th this isn't specifically an attack. So Ancestral Protectors does not apply, but... Uh, it is an all or nothing, so um, is there a reason you rolled intelligence and wisdom? Huh? Oh, why am I rolling intelligence? That was the question, yeah. yeah. Because I'm an idiot, that's why. Let me just roll an intelligence for Hagar. Then. Well, well, no, it's wisdom. It's natural 20 anyway, so. It's wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Well, there. I'm, yeah, I'm rolling. It doesn't make a difference. But <laughs> there you go, that's the correct roll for Hagar. Okay, so I believe that means that Serial takes damage? Yeah, I think, yes. every, I think everybody except Serial saved. Wait, why did you roll twice with Serial? Is using inspiration. No. Yeah, both for using inspiration. Because it was originally a failure, so. Yeah. Wait, those look like you rolled with two different characters, though, because the number. I did. I'm, I've, I'm controlling two different characters. He just didn't. He didn't swap over characters. Good right. So why did he roll again? Well, now he's rolled three times, though. It's he rolled intelligence the second time incorrectly, so he rolled wisdom the third time to be correct. I have no, I have no, no, no he's idea. Rolled, he's rolled wisdom three times. Yeah. Let's just go. Last time. Okay. Oh, sure. it looks like Sorry. Just, two two yeah, wisdoms so they... for Serial, two wisdoms yeah. for Hagar, and two intelligence because... <laughs> whoops. Okay, I see, I see. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. then, Julia, uh, you feel the creature's rage pounding in on your head, coming straight from the water surrounding you, Take seven damage, and this is technically not an attack, so that is full damage, Des despite the attempts Pig. of the voters. Yeah. Um, piss. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to Hagar's other helpful bonuses, you only take one real damage. Piss. Speaking of whom, look who's up. Okay. Oh, she has to save for uh, concentration now, doesn't she? Um, what's the rule for that? It's uh, 10 plus half the damage taken is the DC. No, I it is. I believe it's 10 or the damage, whichever is higher. Ah, okay. What's, so, the, what's the role? Constitution. Constitution. That's right. I was thinking 3.5. I'm sorry. One, oh, that's Hagar. Um, it's tricky having two people, Evan. Uh, she's proficient in constitution. No, proficient, yes. Okay, she rolls an 18, which I'm assuming say, saves so, the spell. Yeah, the spell continues to be in effect. Okay, now Hagar um, has to attack, so... No, 
design damage. Okay. Yeah. That's his it turn. will use oh, wait, another. I'm going to use my one free to interact with objects. Can I take this bottle of enhancing um, oil out of my pocket? And just sp splash it onto your uh, weapon, you mean? Well, um, uh, before, I think it's before you free do that. To take it out of my pocket, and it's another free to interact with it in my pipe, so I'm going to have to splash it on next turn. Well, before you do well, that, you may want to take a look at its health bar. Yeah, it's it's very close to being dead, so don't even bother. In that case, I will ignore everything I just said, and let's <laughs> carry on. Just attack again. Oh, wait, no, you don't get to attack again. Right. No, I'll be level five. Yep. Okay. Lake. Lake is going to delay his uh, turn... To, and as soon as the thing becomes unprone, he's going to fire a witch bolt at it. Or they are going to fire a witch bolt at it. And not an Eldritch Blast? That's that's what I meant. Eldritch Blast. Witch bolt, Eldritch Blast. Blah, 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 blah. I'm confusing spells, but yes, Eldritch Blast will be fired once this thing is no longer prone. Okay. Understood. Chorus's turn. Carlos, I believe that was a plus five to his attack bonus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. He is going to. Uh, Not twenty. Yeah, he's going okay. to get a natural twenty on his first hit, and otherwise miss. But well, he he basically gets to roll for two hits anyway. So. Yeah, pretty much. Just hope he doesn't kill still you guys. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I had a question. Experience. <laughs> when you're ready. He does not kill Steel. Okay. I was just going to ask, do I get any kind of save against these eels? No, because you still think they super exist. Um, so I'm guessing I have well, to use my action to see that they don't. Okay. Yeah, and speaking of which, you do take another d6 of damage. From eel electricity. Ah, so that's these another three. Eels, man. <laughs> but it's secretly psychic damage, just in case. Oh no, I'm actually into real hit points now. Okay, the, the abolith collects itself from off the ground and. Yeah, sure. Wait, oh wait, hold on. I get I get uh I get advantage. And either way it hits. I was just seeing if I got a crit. All right, so uh, that is one D. That's just straight up one D ten. I'm not hulking out. Eat shit. Oh, looks like the Appleith is going to get one turn. Right. <laughs> oh, guy. Could I have possibly <laughs> killed it if I had rolled a ten? Um, no. Okay, so the only way I would have been able to kill it is if I created. Okay, well, I contributed. Off. Okay, so the Aboleth is way past caring, caring about your minds at this point. <laughs> so it is just going to turn to Hagar... With your goddamn Hi. ghost voters. And it is going to attack you three times with its three tentacles. This is, what I was, this is what I was worried about. This is what I up for. Don't get hit. Um, I got hit. No, nope, you did not. I got hit. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only get to react reaction once, but... You, you do. I only get to react if you hit. I only get to react if you hit someone else. Oh, no, I, no, I was. But I get to react. Right. Well, I'm still going to try to save you from that 17. What's your What's your AC? Three. Oh, uh, 14. <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> My AC is three. <laughs> Sorry, is it just those two hits, or was there going to be a third one? There's going to be a third. I, I was just waiting for you to finish your thing. Well, I'll, I'll wait for the third one then, if I can, and then decide which, just in case it's lower but also hits. Unless that would be unfair. I don't know. Your choice. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> in fact... Fuck, I didn't even save you. Well, uh, I'm... That's a die. For better we well, Hagar, I hope your constitution saving throw is alright. Alright. Yeah, I've got um, advantage. I mean, no, uh, proficiency. I'll survive. I'm a wall of hit points. Okay, right. so... If you say I'll survive, then you will absolutely die. 8, 15, 14... Uh, all three are halved because eight. this is bludgeoning damage. And you are raging. Oh, it is. That's half then. Uh, 37 divided by 2. Um... Do I round up or down? Down. Down. Uh, 18? That's not bad. Mm. But you do also have to make three constitution saving throws. And uh, let me take 41, take away 18, 23, which I realize I can just put minus 18. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. All these bloody clicks. One. Okay, you can stop now. You only needed to fail okay. one of them. Yeah. And it nothing does. apparently happens. Nothing apparently happens. And now it's Aurelia's turn. Um. Okay. So Aurelia's gonna kill it. Yes, please, fucking murder um, this thing. I think pretty much guaranteed. I mean, I don't know how many hit points it has, but uh, uh, could miss. This, I'm going to use. Di well, no, but that's the thing. If it misses, it does half damage. So, um, I'm going to use dissonant whispers, so it has to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> and that's why you're glad it does half damage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so only does half damage, and it doesn't. But I still. And oh, sorry, I'm casting this as a level two spell by the way um so roll 46 um yeah 46 and then this is ha halved so wait should i roll two no i should no. roll and then no halved, just right yeah okay so seven, does seven damage. damage seven psychic damage and it hears in its ear whispers of oh girl Rock me like, or shock me like an like electric, an electric eel. The <laughs> baby girl. Turn, Turn me on, me on electric, electric eel. eel. <laughs> the aboleth screeches. <laughs> I'm not a big MGMT fan. And um, like as it. it as it begins dissolving into nothingness. It does have one last thing to say. I will remember this. Yeah, well, won't. And then yeah, it's well, gone. Uh, yeah, well, I'll be dead long before you come back, buddy. It's gone. So, it, it can't hear you. I don't Should've give a shit. Faster. Nope. Wait, I'm <laughs> gonna say my thing anyway. Does it leave a body? It no. does not. Oh. Turn to the Triton, uh, dude. I say, the, it, what I'm gonna do check we do anyway now? And find nobody. Uh, well, the Triton opens his mouth and says, "Well," and then another Triton just bursts into the room from behind. Hey, uh, wait! It looks around. Fashionably late. <laughs> um, she looks around. She uh, spots what's left of the Abolith's quickly decaying body. And just says, was anybody hit by its tentacles? I point to Hagar. I think I'll have a race. Oh, wait, it's got, it's got a decaying body. I want to take some. I want to try and eat it. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop! <laughs> you quickly. and... You and... Oh, really? the, triton no, sla I... the Triton slaps the piece of flesh out of your hand and then casts Lesser Restoration on you. Okay, well, you what was a, a, that about? <laughs> the Abolus has the ability to pass on a, a disease uh, if it touches you. You, you would chlamydia. forever be <laughs> you would forever be uh, forced to live underwater. Oh. It's not chlamydia, obviously. It's a subtextual metaphor for chlamydia. Oh, that's right. no good because metro cities on land. 
you know, exposure to air would have felt like acid on your body. Luckily, I got here just in time. The disease did not have time to set in. Oh, that was lucky. Well, I was lucky, but why are you slapping my snack out of my hand? Because it's... You don't eat that... Because Hedgar, we're gonna have it's to have... also diseased? Yeah. I think, guys, I could have been the only person alive to have tasted it. Wait a second. Those adventurers that we sent back to the surface. We knocked them. We knocked them. They, they got they, mind controlled. They got mind controlled. Yeah, they didn't get disease. Didn't they also drink potion with bits of abolith in it or whatever? Oh, that was a um, a weaker form. Okay, so they're not going to dissolve when they reach land. That's good. Okay. Yeah, technically, it's uh, it it, should, it would it would have had the effect that I really should have had you guys roll for, but uh, but if you hit the abolith then you basically get hit by some of the mucus coating it. And the mucus would have forced you to breathe water for the next few hours. But all, all in all, I decided that was kind of pointless. Because we're going to yeah, be breathing, be breathing water, water for the next, for the next hours couple anyway. hours anyway, yeah. Yeah, I mean, technically, like, I... I I was thinking I would ha like force you to sacrifice your reaction because you need to pull off your caps of water breathing that give you a bubble of air around your head. <laughs> but that would have been like... Yeah, yeah. That, that was actually its main defense. The reason why you chump the aboleth this hard is because it's supposed to be in a, um, a semi-aquatic layer and not fully aquatic. It's actually amphibious. Hmm. Uh, anyway, yep. uh, so that's right. Um, have we found like anything that will be valuable enough to trade for the uh, for the gold statue that we're trying to get? Like the the priest's staff. Is the priest's staff like? Well, actually, uh, thanks for thanks for reminding me. Um, Why don't we just get the trance to chase them off? They owe us. No, they owe us a favor. Yeah. No, we made a promise. Come on, guys. I mean, we did, but if the, well, we didn't really make a promise so much as we made a deal. Yeah, but I'd they rather not, not start another same. underwater war. We, well, our first priority I is, think they go is anyway. helping the Tritons. So if the Tritons gonna are going like, to do that anyway, on the boats in the first session, they stole my city's gold. Let's let's see what the Tritons have to like say about it first, and then we'll decide what to do. Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, well, first of all, let, let me just say that that iron stone that you got would definitely be valuable enough for them. But also, um, once the uh, the mucus starts to fade and the creepy bits of flesh and bone melt away, you notice that there is a clear crystal orb. Yoink. Sitting in what used to be the center of its mass. Can we ask the Tritons what it is? Is this also cursed? Well, if it's cursed, I wouldn't mind giving it to the, to the Suhajin. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of them's a priest, the other one's a knight, so they don't have identify. No. Does I don't know if do. May I? Go ahead, and I hold my my, the, my prize out. I do not let you take it because this is mine now. That's fine. No, I'm just, uh, no, need you to but... well, though. That's not quite how this works, but all right. Well, it just means we're stuck together for the next ten minutes. That's all. <laughs> cool. I mean, I mean, that's fine with me, I guess. No hobo. Um, did the Abelif leave behind a skull? No. It, leave, it left behind nothing at all. Except the oh, I wanted to wear its skull. Except the memories. Is that I what this is? Is that what I'm holding? Is that, am I holding memories? No. no memories. No, what you're, you're holding, holding a crystal ball. is a crystal ball. Okay. You're holding the egg there. The real, the real <laughs> Aboleth is the friends who... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should bash your head in and take your skull. 
don't bash Lake's head in. Oh. But Very yeah, it, it, it is actively a crystal skull, as in the uh, the Wait. magic item called a crystal or a crystal ball. Okay, if it was a crystal Sorry. skull, that would be interesting. <laughs> so I, I realized halfway through I said skull instead. Whoops. Whoops. Anyway, Whoops. But yeah, I'll I'll take it. It's mine now. Well, thank okay, you about it's the, not. Uh, Grenache is going to identify it, so please do do that, Grenache. That's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Okay. Well, Grenache has done so, and I've just told you what it is. Yes. Crystal ball. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought there was going to be more. Never mind then. Uh, nope. It it's is just actively. Don't do it. Just bling. How valuable is it? Like, what does it do? Valuable enough to get us a statue. Well, if it's more valuable than the reward we'll get for the statue, then. Oh, oh wait. That, that's actually that's actually the real trick because you don't know how valuable that gold statuette is. Didn't the guy promise us a, a certain amount as a reward? He promised to pay you the value of the commission, but he did not say what it was. He did uh, say you would get a set, a straight, a flat two thousand for finding the tritons, which you have. But okay. forget, but for getting the gold statuette back, he neglected to mention how much that was worth. Okay. Wait, no, he didn't. Um, I thought I wrote down the price. Oh, it looks like we've gone to the end oh, of this. Oh, no, office. okay, yeah, yep, okay. Yeah. It looks like we've got to the end of this card of tank, folks. Uh, evil shark men, and leave this dungeon, and then finish this quest. Yep. So the crystal ball, what it does is you can use it to cast scrying. That's it. That's boring. I mean, Let's trade it. Yep, it's <laughs> boring. Let's trade it. Uh, it does have a few other things that I'm noticing. Yes. But... You've heard of legendary crystal balls that can do much more than that, but this is so not this one is of them. Basic one. Okay. You've heard of legendary crystal skulls, which which uh, <laughs> star and <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And you think, oh, I, this is the twist we need for the fifties. <laughs> Can't wait to reach level sixty-nine. All right, the Tritons thank you for freeing them, but uh, notably, they don't really offer you any rewards. Yeah, they, they seem they seem very um, duty oriented. So the idea of rewarding people for doing their jobs just doesn't really cross their minds. Now I fist bump one on the way out. Action is my reward. Mm hmm. Um, your next stop. Ask, um, I do mean to ask them uh, what they plan to do next from here. Well, um, secure the area. Make sure that no quota are back, and then we shall re resume our old posts. I imagine the Sequadron are getting out. Of, I imagine the Sequadron must be getting out of control by this point. Uh, yeah, a little bit. That's kind yeah, of why people were willing to pay us to find you. So, ah, uh, duty. Our duty never ends. Go in peace, travelers, and thank you again for your assistance. And thank you okay. for everything that you do. That, like, I guess, sort of goes unnoticed on the surface. So, thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for everything that you do, but poorly because you let yourself get. I, no, don't, I press F to don't. pay respect. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget, they do get tribute every year from the elves. This that is, is true. true. Also, just going to ask them quickly: Would it be uh, like a problem for you if the Swahajin were to get, say, like a crystal ball? That would compromise our security. Mm. Mm. I imagine they have some among their number who know how to use something like that. Yeah, they definitely do. Would it compromise your security to help us drive away a village of them so I can get Metro City's gold back? Um, what what gold did they take exactly? Is this some kind of our ships? 
you told me there was a big stack of gold with uh, the Metro City marker on. <laughs> no, the 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 he was speaking in character. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> then I say that, but without speaking. Yeah, they, they sunk a bunch of our ships while you were um, mislaid. I think your duty would be to help me uh, reclaim what is rightfully at mine. Yeah. And my oh, people's. your city. Yeah, your cities. <laughs> um, roll persuasion. Hey, time for some mayor stuff. Oh. Why did I not take. Why did I not take... Oh, because you don't get it as a barbarian. Yeah. Even oh. so. Yeah. See, well, it... I suppose it is the... It is, it is ultimately our fault that we fell into the enemy's... Uh, uh, ah, crap. The, the, the word. Ruse. Ruse, yeah. It was our fault that we had fought, that we had fallen into the enemy's ruse, and that the Sawajin were allowed to destroy, <clears throat> not this, wreak as much havoc as they have. I will tell you what: we cannot bring our ships or the lives of their crew back, but if we find a wreck on the sur on the ocean floor that bears the colors of your Maytro city. Then we will fight, and we will take what cargo is still uh, still usable, and bring it back to your city. Cool. Cheers. All right. Hey. Uh, so, would a nice crystal ball be uh, be helpful in your endeavors to fighting the Sahuajin? That would sacrifice their security, yes. And would the would the Tritons be willing to uh, give a particular statue? I, I described the statue that uh, the the Sahuajin want this in exchange for. Would they be willing to to bring that back up to the surface and say that it was uh, it's like all. Uh, it was uh, thanks to us, and you know, basically, I'll, I still want to get the reward while not helping the Sawajin wipe these guys out again. Well, the Sawajin are unfortunately uh, difficult foes. We wouldn't be able to guarantee that we can collect and return everything they have taken. Oh, of, co of course, of course, but like, if if you happen to be managed to manage to save this statue. Uh, I think that would be a nice trade for this for this crystal ball. Well, if it's at all, wait, wait a second. Why don't you describe it and then use the crystal ball to find oh, it? Oh, yeah. Okay. I. Uh... Yeah, I, I described the... Uh, Don't we already the, know where it is? Yeah, we know where it is. We saw it in the pile of the... Oh, but I'm thinking he wants to see where it is. Oh, So yeah, that okay. way he knows what it looks like and knows where it is. So uh, Lake describes the uh, the the thing and uses this, this crying crystal ball to help show the, uh, the Triton what it looks like and where it is and, you know, how they can do all that. All right, um... It attempts to um, use the uh, the sphere, but then nothing happens, and it realizes, oh, wait, scrying only works on creatures. Hmm. So describe to me the, the leader of this band of Sawajin. All right, and then Lake does, because he canonically, or they canonically have a very good memory, at least for names, so I'm guessing be able to attach a name to a face. Um, and, and shows, uh, I don't think you need to justify it. Just, yeah, it. either way I, sh I show him or her, everyone I'm showing it to. Well, let me just check here. Yeah. Again, nothing. Apparently it, uh, it was able to resist the scrying attempt. Oh, okay. Well, so yeah, they'll, 
they'll get Maybe back. Can, like, surely, do we remember where the village was that we could give directions to? Yes, and you do have a map, in fact. Unfortunately, Wait a the. Uh, hold on. Um, if I know the target well, then the save modifier is. Your save. Oh, okay. Okay. Or it, it save against you. The okay. uh, the Triton made the scrying attempt. Ah, oh, okay. And the Triton has second hand knowledge. Got it. Okay. Like, but, you know, I feel like it would make sense that like the Tritons who like patrol this area would like be aware of the geography directions to a main sword and camp. Yeah, if you if you pull out the map and point to where these uh, where you encountered the Sawajin, then uh, the Triton Triton leader will nod and say, uh, this is valuable information. We may be able to surprise them if they aren't aware that we're back yet. You may just see that statuette again yet. Awesome. And uh, I say, well... You have that that crystal ball is yours. Uh, use it to keep the water safe, I guess. Cool. Well, good to meet you, Tritons. Yeah, We're you guys out. are cool. And then we all leave. Yep. Hooray. Unless anybody else wants to say anything to them. No, I'm good. No. All right. Now, I believe um, it's getting late, so we can go over the rewards some other time, but you should be aware of a couple of things before we finish tonight. Mm -hmm. First of all, you will all get three months this time of downtime between now and the next adventure. Wow. Well. So, We're all leveling uh, up, right? Yeah, second, everybody is now level five. Nice. Might as well just go ahead and roll my uh, hit dice now. Right. Third, uh, Crimea has decided to bow out. Oh. He has a job now, and uh, he's feeling maybe a little lost in the six party, uh, six member party shuffle. Which I can understand yeah. that. Yeah. Right, and also I can't. I mean, it's like it's very nice and everything, but I can't. It's like almost four o'clock in the morning. I can't stay up to four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. What day of the week, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, we do understand, but uh, yeah, from here on, Crimea will be an NPC. But there is one last thing. You see, after those three months end, Crimea gets a um, gets a message from his boss with the order. This message is suspend the Grey Elf investigation. Bring the Asimar to the Divine City soonest. The local gnome alchemist owes us a favor. Make him teleport you here. Oh, that'll be fun for you guys to find out. Oh, I can't believe that Crummy's got a secret backstory. He, the guy, the, the, the boss told you guys my secret bad story, like 20 minutes yeah, ago, remember? Yeah, No, it was... <laughs> listen, it got, it got lost in the shuffle. I mean, I think it was kind of <laughs> angry, just yelling at things. So. And Grunash kind of already knew, so water off a deck's back for him at this point. Okay, hey, cool. Well, nice. then I'm glad that Bobbin's, you know, first... <laughs> our, our twist works so well. <laughs> <laughs> these people well anyway um, yeah by the way I, I do have a reason for, for why uh, Hagar would have been in town three months later um, I mean that's going to be a very good question right. I'm supposed to go back to Metro City well the thing is that you are in a unique position to um go up to the various sea captains 
in um, in Port Lanneth and um, persuade them to go to your uh, your city instead of to Port Zanzo. So okay. basically, you, you, you're drumming up business now that the seas are open for business once again. Hey, you want to do the... F no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you'll be making a lot of persuade... You, you'll be doing a lot of persuading over the next three months. Okay, well, that's fine. That's my backstory then. I'm out on the trade mission. All right. Okay. Perfect. So that's great. We'll talk about... Well, just post the rewards in Discord or something, and I'll see you guys next week. But I'm going to bed. Yeah, because it's ten to four. Yep. You also. Good night. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Technically, I'm probably supposed to be the one being responsible. Yep. Hope everybody you all go enjoyed watch the HGDQ, I guess. I hope yeah, all of you enjoyed the working. session. Oh no, that was great. I yeah. uh, I was afraid for nothing. We chumped that thing, and it felt great. <laughs> yeah well just just you wait because later legendary monsters get an ability called um legendary resistance if you fail i know the save if you fail the save you automatically succeed the save anyway yep they can yep, do this three times yeah, for combat it's, it fucking sucks if you're not the dm <laughs> if you're dm it's really great and i love it Anyway. Yeah, but think about this. Now I get to hit things twice in a turn. Yeah, yeah. Twice. I got to scale to your power, you know? Uh, I get to yeah. fire Eldritch Blast twice, and also I finally get to add my Constitution modifier to it. But yes, good night. Two hits.